Welcome to Binge or Purge Streaming Reviews. I am your host, Demo. My co-host is Joe Taylor. This is episode 44. I can't believe it, man. We'll talk when we get to 50. All right? Okay. All, all right. right. Joe, have you watching anything? What's on the horizon? Yeah. <laughs> what, are you, what are you up to? I actually did something uh, that doesn't help us at all. I, I recently watched Studio 60 on the Sunset Strip. The Aaron Sorkin short-lived NBC Saturday Night Live type of thing. Yeah, and the reason this show didn't go, it only went one season, because it came out against... 30 Rock. They came out at the exact same time. Both on NBC. Yeah, both shows about a uh, late-night show. Uh, NBC uh, has SNL, so they could do whatever they want. The Studio 60 show was an hour-long drama... And 30 Rock was obviously a half-hour comedy, but they're both about SNL or some version of SNL. Studio 60 was set on the West Coast, obviously. Anyway, Matthew Perry, Bradley Whitford, who I love, uh, Merritt Weaver is in it. That's going to come up later. Maybe next week I have something about Merritt Weaver. She works a lot. She's she's one of those actresses you're like, I've seen her and now I know her name. You know, it's like she's finally catching on. And she's great in this show. Keep that in mind for when we talk about something next week or the week after anyway it's a fantastic show but it doesn't matter to us no it doesn't because it doesn't stream and it was a network show that was canceled eons ago but thank you for mentioning it yeah well it is on amazon we'll talk more about Merritt weaver what do you want to talk about first tonight i just want to say one thing before we get into it i also been watching something from the good old days it's a it's a classic rewind we don't normally do this i'm not really going to review it but my girlfriend has started watching one of my all-time favorite shows on HBO, Six Feet Under. Oh, and yeah. And as a result, I've gone back and watched it. It's all streaming now on Amazon for free. So if you're like, I don't have HBO Go, I don't have... Don't eat it. It's all there on Amazon. And uh, man, what a great show. I'm almost done with the first season. I know where it's going to go. And it's what it's it's cool to go back and watch something at the beginning when you know, like, the character arcs that are awaiting, you know, and and what's in store for these characters. Just saying, if you've never watched Six Feet Under, it's something you should go back and definitely check out. It's a classic HBO show. One of my all-time favorites. Top 10. Top 10 all-time favorite shows. I might take you up on that. I've never seen it. I mean, I know what it is, but I've never really watched it. Really? Was it before or after The Sopranos and The Wire and stuff? Uh, it came out in 2001, so it was around the same, I mean, after Sopranos, but but still playing, they were existing at the same time. Okay, so it was a Chris Albrecht thing. No, mm. this was a uh, Alan Ball production. Hold on, you're both right. Alan Ball produced Six Feet Under, but Chris Albrecht was the head of HBO at the time. Oh, American Beauty. Yeah, he did American Beauty, and the next thing he did right after that, he got this deal with HBO, and he did Six Feet Under, and of course after that he went on and to do True Blood, which I never got into. But Joe, I'm telling you and all my listeners, if you want to go back and see a classic show that you'll love, I guarantee, check it out, everybody. Six Feet Under on HBO, streaming now on Amazon Prime. Okay. All right. <laughs> this is a short, short review. Is that a short? It's just like, we just get a little hand clap there. It's like, it's a bin. <laughs> okay. So we got a, we got a big high profile uh, Netflix original movie to review. We do. That we've both seen. Go ahead. It just came out. It is Horse Girl. It's one hour and 44 minutes. It stars Allison Brie, Debbie Ryan, John Paul Reynolds, and Molly Shannon. Now this has just to clarify for the listeners no relation to bojack horseman so you do not need to change the uh channel right now yeah we're not going down the bojack no. trail no we're done that's been dead and buried okay yeah. go ahead horse girl horse girl yes this was co-produced and co-written by allison brie and it was directed by jeff Baina. i don't know he also co-wrote it with her i don't know what he's done but It seems like this is her passion project. Like, this is the type of thing she wrote for herself so she could, like, I'm going to go for it. 
Can I interject something? Please. Jeff Baina co-wrote I Heart Huckabees, which is one of my favorite movies of all time. No way. Yeah. With Good David find. O. Russell. I think that movie's interesting. I don't think... The, the, I'd say the Lily Tomlin outbursts when she's bitching him out are better than the movie. Oh, oh Have you seen those? The, the, when Where David her and o. David Russell. o. Russell and they have the massive fights oh, on yeah. set. Oh, yeah. Those are epic, dude. Those I mean, they hate each other. Yeah. Oh, they really do. And uh, the scene with where they're at dinner with the uh, Nigerian guy and Mark Wahlberg and Jason Schwartzman. Uh, Mark Wahlberg starts arguing with the Christian dad about fossils and whether or not God really loves you. And his children are like, what? What? God doesn't love us? There's a, there's a, some scenes in that movie are so epic and nobody's ever seen this movie. Besides me and you, apparently. Are there a lot of people that have seen I Heart Huckabees? I don't know. Great Absolutely. Film. It's, it's like a cult film. I don't think it's that great. And now that you're telling me that this guy, Jeff Baina, co-wrote it, this makes this movie make more sense to me. Guess who his uh, girlfriend is? I don't know. It'd be more fun if you tried to guess. I, I can't guess. I don't know. Debbie Ryan. Uh, no, good guess. Aubrey Plaza. Oh, they're together. That's what okay. I've read. All right. I, don't know. I, I haven't don't... watched them screw or anything. These... <laughs> They're all incestuous. Totally out here. would though. It's an it totally incestuous business. Everybody screwed everybody, right? I've dated sure. this person. Blah, blah, blah. Well, I got left out, but yeah, I think everyone else has. Sure. Right, I know. All right, sorry. Go on. Well, you feel free to jump in anytime. You watch this uh, before. Okay, before I go in deep, I watched this this afternoon. Okay, <laughs> I didn't watch it Friday night when I originally intended to because it was Valentine's Day, and you know I had to do stuff with my girlfriend, so I get a chance to watch it till today. Now. Saturday morning, I was at the eye doctor's yeah. and I'm sitting in the waiting room and who sits directly across from me where I have to make eye contact with her? Allison Bree. That's so random and uh, fortuitous. Right? Did you and talk to her about this movie? No, but and I kept going like, why didn't I watch it last night? I could tell her, oh my God, I watched Horse Girl last night and I loved it. But I didn't watch it. And you want to know? It's good. Because I would have had to lie to her then. Well, you could have just said you watched it and you liked it like everyone else does in this town. But then she could have gone like, oh, what part did you like best? And I go, uh, <laughs> the part in color? I mean, what am I, you know what I mean? That, she that actually happened. You, you know what I mean? You never know how, you never know what a celebrity is going to go. She'd be like, gee, thanks. Or she'd be like, oh, what was your favorite part? She could be so amped that I watched this and she wants to like, you know, get into it with me. I don't so think I she had cares. To, she got paid. She doesn't care. She, but this was this seemed like her baby, right? Well, yeah, I guess. I mean, I mean she, she wrote she it, went yeah. for it in this. Yeah, and right. I applaud her performance. She's an incredible. We've always said good things about her. Community, she, glow, stuff we love. She goes for it without question, especially in this movie. She gets naked. I know some listeners they're really into uh, Allison Brie and nudity. Oh, yeah. Put the two together, Allison Brie nudity. You get it in this movie a couple of times. Yeah. Right, I remember. Yeah, it's hard to forget. Some of the scenes you're like, "Oh my god, really?" You're like, yeah. "Put some clothes on, young lady." <laughs> I don't know. I don't say. remember <laughs> thinking that, but yeah, okay. <laughs> Go ahead. It was a missed opportunity by me not watching it because she was sitting right in front of me for 20 seconds, and I could have been like, "Ah, perfect chance to you know plug the show or something." Of course, I wouldn't do that. You asked her to call in or something, right? But I didn't watch it. So I was thinking, if only I'd watched it. Ah! Well, start lying, Demo. It's I know. Los Angeles. All right. All right. Fine. Uh, anyway, what'd you think of the movie? <laughs> uh, it's interesting. Okay. A listener on Twitter recommended it to us. Cemetery Grove is this person's handle. I think they like horror. That seems to be the gist of their or Twitter page. I'm not exactly sure, but they recommended it to us. And I said, hey, we're definitely going to review it. They said the storyline was unique and unconventional and recommended it if you want to view something out of the ordinary. So I was like, okay, cool. We'll definitely check it out. That's not far off, actually. Right. I'd say that's a spot-on review. It's definitely out of the ordinary. But I got to be straight with you, man. I cannot recommend it. You got a limited amount of time, right? People are, like, busy. And I can't say to you, this is worth... You're one hour and 44 minutes. Let's watch something else, man. And there's good things in this. The performance by her, she's like committed, right? But it's not enough because the movie's just too weird, man. It's too weird. Yeah. 
and it didn't really go anywhere for me by the end. And when it was over, I was like, purge. Purge. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, l- let me weigh in on it, too, because I watched it. Now, here's the thing. I love Allison Brie. I've said that a million times. I've said it a million times, too. Who's not? I- We're both Allison Brie fans. And guess who produced this movie? I don't know, well, Joe. I wish Tell you would me. guess when I say I guess. don't want to guess. Okay, the Duplass brothers. Oh, that's right. I know. You told me that. But don't make... Just say, hey, do, 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 I just produce wish by my favorite people. It'd be a fun game. I don't want to play the guessing game because I never get it right. That's the fun of it for me. But <sighs> anyway, I love the Duplass brothers. I know you Even do. more than I love Allison Brie. Mm-hmm. I didn't like this. Oh, thank God. I like Thank God. The I was, script was okay. Her acting was incredible. There were great things about it. The pace was so, off, man. It was weird. It was, yeah. I, I'm with you, man. I, I say purge, too. Watch something else. I wanted to like this. I did. I was like, oh, I got a good recommendation. And I figured you were going to be like, oh, I loved it. You're surprising no. me. I'm relieved. I'm no. relieved that you didn't care for it. I didn't and I'm relieved that, you know, I, I didn't watch it. it and have Allison Brie in front of me. Then I would have been like, oh, no, Allison Brie's in front of me, and I just hated her movie. <laughs> you, know, you know, I almost said to you, I, I uh, held back, but when you go, Allison Brie was in my whatever, I wish I would have watched Horse Girl, I almost say, <laughs> said, no, you don't. <laughs> She would I know. Have just flipped her off and said, uh, "And I was mad at my girlfriend because she wanted to watch something else, and yeah. she, and she was just like, I just saved you, because yeah. <laughs> you would have made a fool out of yourself by talking trash. Well, I, mean, I wouldn't have talked trash, but yeah, she's I know. Unfortunate. Um, I give Allison Brie credit for going for it. I think I've said going for it a hundred million times in this review already, but not enough there, man. Not enough. No, if you want to watch a good uh, Duplass Brothers movie, go watch Baghead on Amazon instead of this thing. Baghead? Yeah, very good. One of their first movies with Greta Gerwig in it. They filmed it for literally zero dollars. They just went to their parents' cabin in Big Bear and shot a horror movie. Mm -hmm. It's very good. Watch that instead and watch everything else Allison Brie does, especially Glow. But this, no, not worth your time. Thank you. Oh, thank God. Oh, do you want to know what it has on Rotten Tomatoes? Please. You want to guess? No. God, I wish you were more uh, playful. Uh, <laughs> said nobody ever about Demo. Yeah. Uh, it has a 70 with the critics. Uh-huh. Audience. Four, 48 with the audience. 47. Very hey, yeah. off by one. Look at you Not guessing. Not a bad guess for okay. a non-guesser. All right, so we we already decided. Yeah, we don't have to a, hit it again. Okay. We know. We know. Okay. It's a purge. Okay. Have I got a surprise for you? Uh-oh. You know, my one of my favorite things about this show, even before we started doing this, my, one of my favorite things in life was to tell people about stuff that they never would have come across. And then they're like, oh, thanks for telling me about, uh, you know, whatever. Shark Boy and Lava Girl? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I got, that got a lot of people. Now you, now you want to guess everything? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is a movie that played at South by Southwest and like a couple of other obscure film festivals. And now it exists only on Amazon. So already I'm kind of in because that's our, I mean, that's, you know, our movies like that. It just played in some festivals and now it's on Amazon. This is a movie called Francis Ferguson. I've heard this name. Have you really? I don't know anything about it. I've just heard it. Okay. Like it's, been, it's out there. Francis Ferguson. I've, well, it's, it's based on a uh, substitute teacher who had sexual relations with a student in ne- Nebraska. Okay. So this is a fictionalized version of a true story? Yeah, it's expanded on. Now, this was narrated by Nick Offerman. Oh. So the, um, <laughs> now hold it, it gets better. So the description on uh, Amazon was like a bone dry comedy that, bl-, and I was like, I'm in, I'm in. I've been described. Mike, you are bone is, dry. Thank you. Yeah. This was made by Bob Byington. Any idea who that is? No. Infinity Baby, which is a great movie with Kieran Culkin and Nick Offerman about a company that sells babies that never get old. And it's all black and white. Megan Mullally's in it. Nobody has any idea what I'm talking about. Right I have now. no clue of that movie whatsoever. <laughs> this is stuff that is so indie. It goes straight to Amazon and it never pops up in the uh, algorithm. So, so how would you know? How do you find this stuff? <laughs> what do I don't you know, do man. at night? You're like you, you do deep dives. Oh, I'm on the dark web, dude. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm doing weird stuff. The most recognizable person in this movie, 
uh, besides Nick Offerman narrating is Martin Starr, who's in it for 42 seconds, roughly, at the very end. That's it. He has a cameo. Yeah. They probably made this thing for like six grand. I mean, it's it's super. It really reminds me of something that I would have done. It's a good movie. It's weird. It's dark. It's super dry. But it is a comedy. It is a dry comedy. It's a bone dry comedy. Get it right. Yeah, exactly. Co-written by Kaylee Wayless, uh, who I've never seen before, but guess who she reminds me of? You just use the word guess. Stop with the guessing. Alison Brie. She reminds oh. me a lot of Alison Brie. Okay. Very pretty, very um, sarcastic, funny. I liked her a lot. It's <sighs> This thing's weird, man. It, look, you know how much I love indie movies? Yeah, you have a sickness. I do. For me, this is a total binge. I loved it. How long is this thing? One hour and 14 minutes. This is on Amazon exclusively. Like I said, it played at South by Southwest. It's great, man. I mean, it uses a lot of really cool filmmaking devices. Uh, A lot of cool, like, I don't know. If you don't know what that means, then you're not going to care. I think they made it for... Fades and dissolves. What do you mean filmmaking devices? A lot of, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) What is is filmmaking devices? That's the vaguest thing I've ever heard of. It's just well done. It's interesting. Just watching it is interesting. It's creative, is it? It's creative. Thank you. The story is good. Uh, Nick Offerman as narrator is good. Now, I want to show you something which obviously no one else can see except for you, but this is the cast list from IMDb. One really bad sign is when only about a third of the cast has a photo. Oh, yeah. The rest are just blank uh, mystery photos. Yeah, they don't pay the uh, $100 a month or a, a year or whatever it is to have their headshot on their own IMDb. That's <laughs> the majority of the cast. The only other, I like it already. The only other recognizable person is David Crumholtz. You know who that is? Yep. Okay. He's in it. He's good. Anyway, she sleeps with the student, but they kind of tell it from her point of view. Now, I'm going to wrap this up soon, but I want to give you just a taste of the review it got from The Hollywood Reporter. Here's the headline. Fringe-dwelling filmmaker Bob Byington looks at a teacher-student sex scandal from the felon's point of view. Do I need to read any more of it? They obviously don't like it. hated it. Don't like it, because God forbid you have the felon's point of view. Right. Any movie can have any point of view. Well, not wouldn't, according to the Hollywood Reporter. Well, no, but I'm saying, wouldn't wouldn't the felon's point of view be an interesting take? I no? sure thought so. Right? I sure. I thought mean, so. you can't you can't. Oh, it has to be done from the, you know the victim. Sometimes you know interesting things come from the perpetrator. Yeah. No. Right. No, that's kind of my point. Also, this guy Bob Byington, he did a movie called Seven Chinese Brothers with uh, Jason Schwartzman. It's very very good. You saw that too. Yeah. Wow, I, man. This is deep cuts, dude. This is back when there were blockbusters and you'd wander into the back aisle and find stuff, you know. Anyway. I was wandering in, back into the back aisle back then. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, uh, the, I know. I Past know the, uh, what are those, the beads. Go through the saloon doors I don't want to know what you did with the beads. All right. <laughs> so this thing has a 78 with the critics and no score with the audience because no one's seen it except for me. But it's You a, should write a review for it and be the one. I'm going to write a review on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, do it. Yeah, by the time this comes out, I'll be uh, immortalized on Rotten Tomatoes. Excellent. Sounds like a binge. Sure does. Congratulations, Joe. That surprised you, right? I am surprised. I love surprising you. Yeah, I mean, I'm just surprised by the amount of indie film you have watched. Dude, I've seen stuff that only exists on one copy of a DVD, probably. I feel like you just go into some editing room before a movie's even finished. Like, like, all right, let me let me jump on the flatbed and see what this is before anyone is even like you know had their eyeballs on it. Dude, I've seen the Louis C.K. movie that got buried. Oh, the Woody Allen one? No, no, the, the, not. I'm I love sorry. you, Daddy. I love the, the one that's in black and white. And nobody's it's like, seen seems, it. How did you see that before it got? Uh, I'll you tell know. you later. Tell me now. This is interesting. A friend of ours has a. Uh, I, it's not really that interesting. It's just it was on something that someone has access to. It's like a torrent or something. But is this probably. before or after it got after after? Yeah. Oh, so it was like black market viewing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It was John Malkovich. I mean, you know who's in it. Yeah, I love seeing stuff because then I get to tell you about it and other people. And they did get you to like go, it? Oh, it was great. It was a fantastic movie. <laughs> I love Pamela Adlin too. You do like Pamela Adlin? Yeah, yeah. Do you watch Better Things? No, I, I would like to. I've watched all three seasons of that. 
Okay. And the fourth season is coming back in a couple weeks. And I'm contemplating whether I should review it or not as someone who's watched the first three seasons. Hmm. But it is going to be on FX and Hulu the next day, so it might fit into my rules there. Okay. By the way, listener Steve says, I'm breaking our rules by reviewing shows that are on FX and then stream on Hulu the next day. He says it goes against our principles. You know what I say? Screw you, Steve. We do what I want here. And I'm going to watch the FX shows that stream the next day on Hulu. Because every freaking billboard in LA is telling me I'm okay with it. Nothing that has been advertised for FX doesn't say Hulu with it. It's like FX now Now equals Hulu. Now, yeah. So moving forward. So that's what I'm doing. So you know what? I might review the Pamela Adlon season four of Better Things. I saw her at uh, Vibrato Grill one time. She's very pretty. In person. Congratulations. Thank you. What else you got? All right. I have a docu-series that a listener has been hounding me. Every time I see him, he's like, D-Man, D-Man, I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you. The toys that made us. You got to watch the toys that made us. Now, I had already watched the first episode of the toys that made us. Why? Because the very first episode is about, why don't you guess, Joe? Thank you. (laughs) See, I'm good at guessing at stuff, so I like it when you ask me. And they showed up with the gift certificate inside because they ran out of plastic. You know the whole thing. So obviously I watched that one. Now, this is from the same guys that made the movies that made us. Which mo- was great. Which we was both great. We both, those, you know. So their scenario is they, had, they do a, four episodes a season. So there are three seasons of The Toys That Made Us. Uh, it debuted in December of 2017 and season three uh, just came out in November of last year, 2019. So you got 12 episodes. They average about 45 minutes each. And if you are in any way interested in the toy they are talking about, you got to watch these. I watched seven of the 12, right? Because some, I was, I was not going to watch the My Little Pony, okay? I wasn't going to watch, you know, the wrestling toys one. I don't care. What I did watch was obviously the Star Wars one. I watched Barbie because, check this out, Barbie is based on a German doll from the 1950s that was based on a comic book character that was a prostitute. Okay. Just saying. That's interesting. The original Barbie is based off of a whore. Okay. I, and I think that's fascinating and what they end up doing with this stuff. But anyway, Barbie, He-Man, the Masters of the Universe, G.I. Joe, Transformers, Legos, and Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Those are the ones that I watched. There's also uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, oh, yeah. Star Trek. Uh, I forget what the other ones were. Hello Kitty, My Little Pony, and Professional Wrestling are the remaining three. So if any one of these things piques your interest, especially if you're a Gen Xer, I think these these shows are made for Gen X people. Now, Gen X is what, born before 1980? Generation X typically refers to people born between 1965 and 1980, but those years can vary slightly. Now, the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, that might be more for millennials, but Mm -hmm. like Transformers, Star Wars, He-Man, even though I was not into He-Man, the He-Man one is great. There's a common theme in all of these, and it's like, who takes credit for coming up with these ideas? And there's always these old guys squabbling about, like, you know, who's the real person that made this happen? So it's like this fun infighting, and like the movies that made us, there's a lot of crossover. So they interview one guy who happened to work on, like, three different toy lines because he worked at Hasbro or Mattel or something. Right. So this is a major binge for me. Because it's a lot of fun, and if you played with that toy, you gotta watch. If you like 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 Legos, right? You played with Legos, Joe. Sure. You gotta watch this. I you I had no idea how many times Lego almost went out of business and went bankrupt. Oh, really? Yeah, you wouldn't. Okay. I mean, that is and, interesting. And, and we're you know, and also like you know the things that like you know once they, they had the blocks that they made. Yeah. But they didn't lock from the bottom, so they would fall over. And it wasn't until they made the bottom portion that, that would stick to, you know. That's when the Legos took off. You know how the top of a Lego is. Yeah, but what did the top of the Lego hook into before that? It didn't. It was hollow. So like you could build them, but then they would fall over. But so then they put in the bottom part, and that revolutionized everything. 
Okay. Like I'm saying, there's all these little intricate that things that you learn, and it was like Transformers, you know, like how they came from Japan and how they translated to America and how they work together, and there's this backstabbing involved for over toys, man. Yeah, over toys. It's a cutthroat business, but like I said, the toys that made us a lot of fun, easy to watch, man. Like I said, 45 minutes average. You go on there, three seasons, four episodes each, 12 total. If you go, oh, I loved that toy. Watch it. I was just scrolling through the list of the toys. I don't think I had Star Wars toys or Barbie or He-Man. I had G.I. Joe's. My brother collected Star Trek toys. We never took them out of the packages. Oh, wow. He sold them later on eBay. Or maybe he still has some of them. I don't know. Uh, Legos, of course. And I loved the Turtles. Yeah, I was that. never into the Mutant Ninja Turtles. I actually is had the professional wrestling guys. You too. did. I'm sure. Hacksaw Jim Duggan, all of them did. Yeah, you're speaking gibberish Ultimate to me. Warrior. I know none of that stuff. So, okay. see, that's for you. There's a little yeah. something for everybody. I like that. Funny thing, though, what I find interesting, like, like the Masters of the Universe thing and uh, G.I. Joe, they were all flabbergasted over Star Wars toys. Like, they were all trying to, like, what do we got to do to compete with Star Wars? Because it truly dominated the market in the late 70s and early 80s. And they talk about how He-Man and Master of the Universe came about just because they were so sick of getting their butts kicked in by Star Wars. <laughs> getting their butts kicked in. Well, you know, you know what they should have done is uh, kept one of the possibly uh, hottest intellectual properties of all time secret so that there were no toys uh, during Christmas of a, a character's hype. I'm talking about Baby Yoda. I like that Baby Yoda was kept under wraps. Finally, we got a surprise for that something. That cost them billions They of will dollars. make that money back in two months. I think the toys are coming in April. It's going to be gangbusters. And, I, and I'll say, who cares about the money? Fans deserve to be surprised for once. And Baby Yoda... No matter what you think about The Mandalorian, Baby Yoda surprised everyone. No one saw Baby Yoda coming, and to me, that is a win. Okay. All right, so all right anyway, a- so that's, that's the toys that made us binge. All right. Well, we've had two binges and one purge. That's a pretty good ratio. Yeah, not bad. For us. Right. I don't know, man. Can we go home now? Yeah, but before we go, is there anything you're looking forward to? Uh. <sighs> Spring training just started, man. You got, got my go get it out of the ocean shirt on. Uh, Dodgers are back in business. Oh, baseball. And now that kind of counts as streaming because you can only watch it on Spectrum if you pay $160 a month or some crap. So I feel like that counts. Don't get me started on this. All right. On, on what? I, on the fact that Spectrum, people, you know, there's this whole thing of like, no one watches baseball anymore. Baseball. You can't, where are you going to watch, gonna watch it? Because they sign these ridiculous deals. Every baseball game should be available for free on television so as many people that want to watch the sport can do it. This whole like, well, we made millions and we signed this exclusive rights deal. It's like, screw you guys, right? Yeah. You're, you're ruining the sport with these, with these deals, with these networks and streaming services, right? Sports is for everyone. My mom has the same issue. Uh, she likes the Syracuse Orange, the basketball team. Yeah. She gets to watch like one out of five games because the region she's in, you have to pay for it. And I'm like, well, my mom is 86 years old, almost in a freaking wheelchair. What do you want her to do? Go to these games? games you, you're i'm saying so you're cutting off your fan base right by not providing it for the people that live in the area you know yeah. it's like oh you can get it in tennessee tennessee doesn't care whether or not they're getting the syracuse orange but guess what they do in rochester yeah. okay no dude well on that same note you know gonzaga basketball my favorite college team two games on national television this year they're the number one team in the country on espn twice all year come on Sports are becoming a streaming property now, and that's a problem. It so. is a problem. But, I got no problem with TVs or movies, and it's funny. But sports, I'm telling you, man, should be available for everyone. Yeah. All I was trying to say was that I'm looking forward to baseball season, and, and you had to make a whole thing out of it, but I agree. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Joe, where can they find us? Oh, gosh. Uh, Spotify, iTunes, YouTube, iHeart. Yes. We've not talked about this yet. We'll get into it more next week, but... We are on iHeart. Yeah, we're on the iHeart network of podcasts now. We are also on Listen Note. Pretty much anywhere that you listen to podcasts, you can find it. You can get a hold of us on Twitter at Binge or Purge, Instagram at Binge or Purge Podcast, Binge or Purge Podcast at gmail.com. 
Facebook slash binge or purge or just come over and hang out, man. It's cool. Yeah, we'll watch something with you. Sure. And berate you. <laughs> awesome. As always, we want to thank Just the Facts. You can follow Just the Facts on Instagram and Twitter at the Jessica Greer. And that's it for this week. For Joe Taylor, my name is Demo. This has been Binge or Purge Streaming Reviews. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>